Here's step-by-step step how Brad Pitt's character won her over in the famous coffee shop scene in the Meet Joe Black movie. Find out next. Welcome back to the channel, Shakers. Derek Van Shake here. The coffee shop scene in the 1998 movie, Meet Joe Black, is one of the most famous and most perfect pickup moments in movies. Joe, played by Brad Pitt, genuinely and effortlessly got Susan, who is a complete stranger, to completely fall for him over a cup of coffee. So much so that later on in the movie, when he turned into this... This morning, yes. I wasn't quite myself. What are you eating? Can't buy. She forgave all of those odd mannerisms because he was so perfect and wonderful in the coffee shop when they first met. But how did he do it? That's what we're gonna find out. We're gonna break down body language and verbal dynamics to finally reveal to you how he effortlessly got a complete stranger to fall head over heels for him. And if you're interested in meeting anyone, this insight will surely help your game. Now, let's get started. Hi. It's not what you say about her, it's what you don't say. Susan has a boyfriend, but Hannibal Lecter doesn't think he's right for her. Not an ounce of excitement, not a whisper of a thrill. Stay open. Who knows? Lightning could strike. And of course, he finishes up with some foreshadowing of what's to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't heard that one before. Notice Susan came into the coffee shop from the left and not the right. So Joe had no idea that a woman he's attracted to just walked in. Honey, you have to go on. Joe's speaking on a payphone. He's having a spirited talk, which is creating a little bit of a scene. Okay, there's a time to sow and a time to reap. Y you have to sow. Sorry. Besides Joe indicating that he's a little bit of a klutz, all that extra noise drew her attention and curiosity to what's being said and finding out more about who this person is on the phone. We're naturally curious of people who stick out and do not fit the typical mold. Not always in a positive way, of course, but regardless, different is interesting. No, I like him. I don't like him anymore. Because you're, you're my honey. Someone messes with you, they mess with me. That's it. Now, Susan is getting a candid glimpse into who this guy is by overhearing his personal conversation. I'm on a plane in a heartbeat. You let me know. When I get my phone in, you're my first call. I promise. Mm hmm Hit the books, get the degree. One day we'll be hanging out a shingle together. Joe is speaking loudly enough where it's not creepy that she's able to mention the contents of his phone conversation later on in this scene. How's that? Hmm? Okay. You all right? <laughs> yes. Susan got to candidly observe him as a protector. Someone messes with you, they mess with me. Advisor. There's a time to sow and a time to reap. Y you have to sow. Motivator. Hit the books, get the degree. One day we'll be hanging out a shingle together. And fun loving with his laughter. <laughs> yes. The fact that she's looking at him and smiling when she could just be looking straight ahead and be listening in indicates that she likes what she's hearing. You bet. Be strong. I love you. Bye bye. At this point, Susan feels like she knows him a little because she got to witness what he's like when he didn't know she was listening. She already got some good initial feelings about him even before they started talking. Now notice how quickly Susan looks at Joe. Yeah, Susan immediately looks at Joe to find out what this guy looks like. And since it was Brad Pitt, she was very disappointed. This is the first time he notices her, and based on how much you'll see him glance at her, he's of course attracted to her. He also realizes she overheard him talking loudly because she already has her coffee and is well settled in, writing in her notepad. <laughs> this is really good acting and writing. They had him take a sip of orange juice where that slurp went down the wrong pipe so his opening words at the counter wouldn't be thank you to the worker. They wanted the buildup of those first words to go to Susan. Now here's his opening line to her. You may even call it his pickup line. You ready for it? Morning. Yep, it's one word. Morning. <laughs> Some have the idea that an opening line must be amazing. Kind of like, oh, oh my goodness, what can I possibly say to them? No, a greeting is perfect. It's just the start of a conversation. Because remember, as attracted as you are to that person, you may not even want to spend one minute with them once you start to get to know them. In a very meek voice, Susan says, morning, back. Has that ever happened to you? 
You say, hi, how are you? How are you doing to someone you're interested in talking to? And you just get a meek one word answer back. And what do we naturally all assume? Right, we naturally assume that person just doesn't want to talk or they really don't want to talk to us. But that's not always the case. Sometimes they feel a little shy or even insecure thinking that you don't really want to have a conversation with them, but we're just exchanging a polite greeting. Joe doesn't get discouraged by her meek response. Now listen to this brilliant line. I was talking kind of loud there. I'm sorry. He apologizes for speaking loudly, which does two things. First, it allows her to know that he's not inconsiderate by recognizing that it was a little rude to get into a loud spirited conversation in a restaurant. And second, it allows for her to give an open-ended response, which can start a conversation. Keep in mind, the initial greeting of good morning or hi or how are you is to make yourself known to that person. If you really want to talk to them, it's what you say after that initial greeting, which starts the conversation. Oh, not at all. It was fascinating. Look at his face. He's even a little shocked that she responded so well to that conversation starter. And yes, it's because as you saw earlier, when she was listening in on his conversation, she was curious about him and wanted to know more about what he was saying, even though she gave her quintessential meek response to his initial greeting. You will never know if the person you really want to talk with really wants to talk with you until you follow up with something after they give you their typical meek response to your greeting. Yeah, what was fascinating about it? An easy question back to keep her talking. To keep someone talking, especially when you initially meet them, finish with a question. If you feel like you have trouble thinking of questions, just think who, what, when, where, why, while they're talking, because that's the start of a question. Um, you and, uh, honey? my kid's sister. Oh. Right here, he answers her question and she looks down with a disinterested O without volleying a question back at him. Some of us would just end the conversation there thinking, I guess she's not really that interested in talking to me and seems kind of busy. And she just broke up with her boyfriend and was thinking about dropping out of law school. Oh, I'm sorry. No, nothing to be sorry about. Oh. That's the way it is with men and women, isn't it? What's the way? Nothing lasts. What Joe does really well is keeping the conversation alive. Oh, yeah, I agree. She pushes him aside, showing more disinterest in him by looking down with her response. Some of us would be thinking, she seems very busy, and she's busy writing. I'll stop talking now. But nope, he continues with the program and continues with his frame. Watch. Really? Why? He surely knew she was trying to come across as disinterested from her body language, but ignores that and sticks with his frame that we're having a friendly chat over breakfast together. Even though she doesn't see it that way at this point, it doesn't matter. He sticks with his frame. I'm interested. What's happening is that their frames are colliding. Her frame is, I have a boyfriend, I'm going to be polite to this guy to just brush him off like I've done to many other guys. I'm probably never going to see him again. I have to write all these things on my piece of paper. But his frame is, I want to get to know her. When frames collide, one frame will dominate the other. He's calmly and very politely sticking with his frame. <laughs> I was just trying to be agreeable. Joe flashes her a big smile to show that he didn't take offense to her brushing him off, which shows that he doesn't take himself too seriously and can be lighthearted. But also what typically happens when someone flashes someone a big, genuine smile? Watch. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I, I was sure I'm sure. Yes, that person smiles back. And along with some self-deprecating humor, they share their first laugh together. Laughing releases endorphins or the feel-good hormone, which is a major victory to win her over to his frame. No, it's just that nothing last stuff. That was a problem with Honey's guy. He didn't know what he wanted, so he's fooling around, and she catches him at it. And like one girlfriend isn't enough for him. This does so much. First, he's proactively squashing a possible major concern based on his likely prior experiences. Second, it also gets her to start thinking and talking relationship, which immediately moves him out of the friend zone. Many times we end up in the dreaded friend zone because we're likely too hesitant to make it clear that we want a relationship and don't just want to be friends. 
the hesitation you saw there is because Susan is subconsciously feeling that she's moving into his frame. So you're a one girl guy. In sales, that would be a buying question. And considering she has a boyfriend who she never mentioned to Joe, this is a major breakthrough for him. Yes, I am. Joe said that with a confident smile and pride, but also a smug smile because he's satisfied that his efforts are paying off. That's right. Right. Susan smiles and challenges Joe because that topic interests her. When we're playfully challenged with a smile, it's that person telling us, I want to hear more. Looking for it right now, actually. Mm. Okay. Who knows, you might be her. Did you notice he added the, mm, you might be her? in a half joking laughing way because if he was straight faced when he said it it would come across as creepy well don't laugh i just got into town i got, got the new job I'm trying to get in this apartment joe quickly realizes that going this far this soon this serious on this topic can scare her away so he quickly changes course anyway so you're a doctor mm. How'd you know? Uh, Joe quickly changes topic by playing the assumptions card. Assumptions are a good play when first getting to know someone because it's like a little game where they'll certainly respond because they're curious of why you made that assumption about them. Remember, it's more important to not be offensive than to be right. Saying so, you must work at McDonald's, don't you? Wouldn't be a good assumption because they'll probably be offended even if you're right. Because everyone's a doctor around here. So if I needed a doctor, you could be it. I could be her. Yeah. You could be her. Uh -huh. Notice the flirty giggle smile, but also notice how quickly her emotions change. Yeah, I could. Yes, she shakes her head and immediately loses that smile, pulling her left side of her mouth back in disappointment in herself, and then confirms what she just said factually. It's surely because she feels conflicted and feels bad for flirting and not even mentioning that she has a boyfriend. I'm, I'm working at the hospitals. I see. This is a lucky day. Just get in the big bad city. Not only do I find a doctor, but a beautiful woman as well. Now it's extremely obvious he's flirting with Susan, but no response at all because she knows she hasn't mentioned her boyfriend to him, but at the same time, probably doesn't want to discourage him. Do you mind me saying that? Oh, yeah, no, of course. Abs no, it's fine. It's fine. It's just fine. <laughs> Listen, could I buy you a cup of coffee? Breathing increases in nervousness because she knows she's letting him advance without letting him know her status. Hi. Now, when I hit play, see if you can spot her nervous gulp. Um, I have some patients coming in, so I should probably yeah, yeah, I gotta go. get to the apartment and get off to work. Yeah. I'd still like to have another cup of coffee. Well played, Joe. By relating to how busy he is too, shows empathy for her. If Susan feels like he's making her feel wrong for running off, she'll surely become defensive and then run off even just to prove the point. Doing that also increases his perceived value. He's implying he's busy too and can't be hanging around the coffee shop all day because he's got nothing better to do. Um, Would you let me do that? Well, yeah, um, okay. Deal. More apprehensive body language with a bottom lip bite since she feels like she's doing wrong. While Susan is sipping coffee with her replacement boyfriend, her father, Hannibal Lecter, <gasps> is getting kicked around by a supernatural force. It's kind of a pro bono job. Now the movie cuts back to Susan's mini coffee date. Pro bono? Yeah. <laughs> Meaning doing good? I know what you're saying. It doesn't pay so well, but... Uh... I like it. As Joe is talking, notice what Susan is doing and notice what happens when he mentions marriage. Eventually, it'll depend on the woman I marry, I think. Yes, Susan was lightly stroking her right arm as Joe was talking. In these date situations, we're subconsciously imagining the other person across from us is doing that touching. It's a good sign for you when your date does that. Now, notice her body language response when he starts talking about the woman he marries. Eventually, it'll depend on the woman I marry, I think. Uh, Yes, she goes from gently stroking her arm to a self-body hold. Again, given that this is a dating situation, she's indicating that she wants to be hugged or held by who she's focused on. 
Also, her eyebrows raised sharply, some widening of her eyes and quick head nodding, all indicating great interest and also eagerness to hear his thoughts on marriage. The faster our heads nod, the more eager we are. Maybe she want lots of kids, a uh, bigger house, better car. Uh, college doesn't come cheap, you know. Wow. Give up what you want for the woman you marry. Susan poses that as a slight question to also slightly challenge him to keep him talking about the marriage subject. Joe recognizes that and stays on the topic. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I would. Yeah. Susan is giving Joe what's called sticky eyes. She's packing her things up to leave, but she's still looking at him. When we're attracted to someone, we look at them longer than necessary. Gladly. Because you make your choices, you know? So you and I, if we were married, I would, no, for example, okay? <laughs> Clearly Susan is interested in this marriage topic. So Joe not only stays on the marriage topic, but also now uses her in his example to make the point very clear, memorable, and personal to her. If you and I were married, I would want to give you what you need. That's all I'm talking about, taking care of each other the best you can. Uh, what's wrong with taking care of a woman? She takes care of you. You'll have a hard time finding women like that these days. Susan challenges what he said again, but this time is to get him desiring her, implying that someone like her is hard to find. So Joe shouldn't try looking any further than her. Shoot, you think so? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Lightning is strike. Lightning is striking, just like Hannibal Lecter said. This is meant to be. Aww. Now I gotta go, so. Yeah, understood. With all that brilliant game, he forgot to get her number. But of course, it would ruin the story if he did. Call me a softie, but I think this scene is the cutest scene in movies. They just miss each other looking back, and after all that chemistry, now thinking that neither wanted to see the other again, when they both did. If you notice, she keeps biting her lip, indicating major apprehension and uncertainty. And she's gone. But look who's standing right there. Yes, it's the paramedics. It's a good thing because, uh, watch. If you didn't see the movie, I'm going to try not to spoil it too much here. But her father goes over that bridge with Joe. Joe comes back alone and Susan never tries to find out where her father went. This is all going to look pretty terrible for Joe the next day when the police find her father over that bridge. Magic isn't a very good defense in a court of law. The coffee shop scene is such a great scene because we've all been there in a similar situation where we wanted to get to know that stranger, but we either were too afraid to say anything or when we did say something, it all turned out kind of awkward. Hopefully breaking down how it was well played can not only help your pickup game, but also getting to know people if you're in business or in sales. In the comments, what's the funniest, most clever pickup line you've ever heard? Let everyone know. In the comments below. Now, if this video gets over 30,000 likes, so I know you all want to see this, I will try to recreate this scene using his lines on unsuspecting women in public, and I'll of course record it all for you to see. Will those lines actually work? Will it be awkward? Will she recognize the movie? We'll all just have to find out together. Remember to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on new body language and investigative videos where we always seem to shake up YouTube, and I'll see you at the top.